Verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. You know what that means? It says, by faith. Faith is the thing. It says, when it says, by it the elders obtained a good report. Faith is the thing that separated them from everybody else. Faith is the thing that made the difference in their life. It's, the, it's their faith in God. That is the key factor to set them apart from everybody else. Notice what it says in verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So why does he tell us that right away? He's saying, what he's saying to us is you need to understand that faith is a factor in things that are not seen being seen. You know, the very world that we live in, he says, we understand that it was made out of something that didn't appear. But now it appears, it's pretty tangible, isn't it? This world, this is pretty tangible. This, anything that we can see and touch and feel, it is, it is real. But he said it was made by things that do not appear. So, what is he saying in these verses? Faith is a factor, a key factor on our part, in things not seen being seen. Things that don't appear, appearing. Things that have no substance, having substance. Like that check, uh, it represents something, it represents a substance, but I, I need the substance, right? I need the substance in my life, not just the check that represents it. Now back to verse 1 one more time, Phil. It says, uh, let me read this to you one more time. Now faith is the substance. Could I... Uh, Take a liberty and, and paraphrase it just to help you understand it. Could I say it this way? Faith gives substance to the things we hope for. Or I could say it this way. Faith is the key factor in the things we hope for having substance. Now, again, I'm taking some liberties here and making, I guess I could say these are assertions. I am asserting that that's what the meaning is. Faith gives substance. Is the thing that, the key factor in giving substance to things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I've, I've, I'm suggesting that to you, that that is one way to read that, and that is a true way of reading it. It is our faith is the key factor in giving substance to the things that we hope for, or the things that God wants us to have. Our faith is the key element in bringing those things into reality. Now, having said that to you, I need to prove it to you. It's not enough for me just to say it. I wouldn't expect you to just take my word for it. I need to demonstrate it and, and show you that that is how it works. And uh, let's just look at a few... Uh, Verses. First of all, in Acts chapter 10, let's read uh, Acts chapter 10, verse, uh, I think verse 34 is what I want. And then we're going to look at some, some verses that make this point and then try to make it really clear. Uh, in this uh, chapter of Acts 10, Peter has been called to the house of a Roman centurion named Cornelius, who uh, we're told was a just man, a good man, and he was praying and trying to uh, reach out to God the best way he knew how, but he didn't know about Jesus. And I want you to know today that uh, there is no avenue to God except through Christ. His, all of his good work and his alms and all those good things, they didn't establish a relationship with God for him. And God sent an angel to Cornelius said, you need to send men to Joppa and call for this guy named Peter. He'll tell you something that you need to know. Peter will give you what you need to know. Uh, and so he called for Peter. And so Peter came. And now here's what Peter said to him. This is the message Peter brings to the house of Cornelius these men uh, who gathered together to hear the gospel. Verse 34 says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. By the way, that's a good thought right there. Well, you know what that means when it says God is no respecter of persons? He doesn't have any favorites. That's what that means. God didn't choose one person and said, You know, I just like the looks of you. I'm going to bless you. I'm just going to focus my grace on you, and you're going to get my blessing. But this person over here, eh, I couldn't care less. That's not, see, God's, it says God's not like that. He is no respecter of persons. He treats everybody alike. It means what he has uh, for one person, he has for the next person. That means if one person can obtain something from God, everybody can. It's, it's free for all. Free for He doesn't pick and choose. Is that fair to say it that way? He does not pick and choose. He does not pick one person and say, I just think I'll bless you, but you I'll ignore. He wants to bless everybody. Now, in my story about Bill Gates, if we could picture that God is like the person sending out the million dollar checks, the truth is he's got a check with everybody's name on it. It represents everything that you might possibly need in this life and in the life to come. 
You know, he's interested in all aspects of your being. And he has, he's already got the check. You know, how do they say that? He's already cut the check. That's how they say it. He's already made the check. It's already got your name on it. And just waiting for the endorsement, you see. That's what Peter is saying here. He's no respecter of persons. He treats everybody alike. But you know what? You know, here's the interesting thing. Even though this is true, and Peter's getting ready to tell them about the gospel, the good news, this man Cornelius, who called for him, uh, he, didn't, he needed to hear about it before he could start participating and, and getting in on it. You know? Sometimes we might ask ourselves, well, if God, you know, you know if, if faith were not a part, let me say it this way, if faith were not an essential part, everybody in the whole world would have everything God wants them to have automatically. Everybody in the whole world would be automatically saved because God wants them to be saved. Now, you, you know, you might be thinking, are you, you mean to tell me that something God wants is not done? Yes, that is what I mean to tell you. Lots of things God wants are not done. Because if we have a part, the individual has a part to play. And people respond in all kinds of different ways. As for me, you know, if you said to me, for instance, I've got a check here for a million dollars, I don't think I'd be indifferent to that. See, people just, I think what it is, they don't understand that it's a gift, and they don't understand how good it is, and, and that it's free. I think what people think is, God wants to make them do something. God wants to put them to work. God wants to make them, you know, people think, well, I know I need to change, I need to do this, I need to do that. That's not the gospel at all. It's not what you need to do. It's God's got a gift for you. Did you, you know, I, I want to be really, I'm feeling kind of radical. Right? People think that God's asking them to, to give up things and put away things. He's not asking you to give up or put away anything. He's asking you to receive something. He's asking us to receive something that will change us. And I know I'm talking to people who already you know, feel that way, uh, already have received you know, from Him. But see, that's what God's about, giving. Giving uh, life-changing gifts. So Peter here says, He's no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that fears Him, works righteousness, is accepted with Him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace, that means peace between God and man. Peace by Jesus Christ, He is the Lord of all. That word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began in Galilee after the baptism which John preached. What he's saying here is, I'm not giving you secret information. Everybody heard about this that's going on, but you might not have got the exact details. Now here, he sums it up in one beautiful verse. This is a lovely verse in verse 38, the way he says this. Listen to how he says in verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power... And the word for power there is dunamis, which means force. It means like dynamite. It means he anointed Jesus with, in other words, the forceful power to get it done. Power to accomplish God's will. He anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then it says, who, meaning Jesus, went about doing good and healing. Notice this next verse. All that were oppressed by the, of the devil, for God was with him. Now, the first thing I notice in this verse is it clearly defines who's on which side. Uh, all the oppressing, anything that oppresses, that's the devil. He's, and, and notice that God, he mentions God, and he mentions Jesus, and he mentions the Holy Ghost, all three of them working together, what? For good. Um, anointed uh, with power, with the Holy Ghost and power, Jesus went about doing good. Not bad, but good. And healing. Good and healing, all those, we could say saving. By grace you're saved through faith. Rescuing, healing, fixing things up, making bad things good, making wrong things right, straightening things out, however you want to say it. Healing, all that were oppressed by the devil. That tells us who the oppressing is coming from. The devil, and who's doing the healing. Now, I want you to notice the word all. I think that's really important. It goes along with God is no respecter of persons. You see the word all there? Healing all oppressed of the devil. Jesus' attitude, God's attitude is all. God's not picking. It's free for all. Jesus was anointed with something from heaven, and He still is. And God's still got whatever you need, and we need, and I need. It's still for all. It's for everybody. And it's free of charge. But now here is the, here is the thing that we need to get today. What decides? That's okay, don't worry. It's okay. I, I like to hear them having fun. And they've got a real circus back there today. They've got, they've got a whole crew. <laughs> Believe me, I'd rather hear that kind of sound than that. You know, he's hitting me, he's touching me. You ever take a car trip with kids? Oh, man. <laughs> he's on my side. You know, I didn't ever know there were divisions, you know, little. Anyway, 
I'm happy when they're having a good time.